Although several of Hitler's military headquarters still survive reasonably intact today, the same cannot be said of his private home, the Berghof in Bavaria. Badly damaged in a British air raid towards the end of the war, its remains were then deliberately set on fire by the retreating SS garrison on the 4th of May 1945, shortly before the arrival of French and American troops. The skeleton of the house was then blown up in 1952 to prevent its becoming a Nazi shrine, and today only the building's retaining walls and some fragments of the drive and front steps remain at Orbisalzberg. However, in Munich, five days before capturing the smouldering ruins of Hitler's home, US troops had captured Hitler's luxurious private apartment completely intact, and the building remains intact to this very day. Hitler maintained an apartment in Munich because the city was the home of National Socialism. Throughout the 1930s, a series of special Nazi buildings had been constructed, or older ones adapted for Nazi use, including a collection of edifices on the Königsplatz, including the Brown House, Nazi Party headquarters, where Hitler maintained an official office, and the Führerbau and Verwaltungsbau, a pair of huge reception and administrative buildings. Hitler visited the city frequently, particularly in November each year during remembrance activities concerning the 1923 Beer Hall Putsch, and after renting a number of smaller apartments throughout the 1920s, in 1929 he rented and then purchased 16 Prinzregentenplatz, one of the best addresses in a swanky suburb of Munich filled with apartment blocks and large villas called Borgenhausen. Hitler's apartment initially consisted of a second-floor unit, third floor to Americans, and later most of the other apartments were purchased to provide accommodation for his personal servants and bodyguards. Hitler lived at the apartment until 1934, thereafter spending most of his time at his Reich Chancery apartments in Berlin or at the Berghof, his private house atop the Obersalzberg, and during the war, the Wolfslayer headquarters in East Prussia. However, the Munich apartment did see infrequent visits by the Führer. On the 25th of September 1937, Hitler used the apartment to meet with Benito Mussolini to gain his agreement on German annexation of Austria, which occurred the following year. In 1938, on the 30th of September, he met with British Prime Minister Neville Chamberlain at the apartment, following the signing of the Munich Agreement over Czechoslovakia. Hitler's suite of rooms contained an entrance hall, bedroom, bathroom, dining room, and library study that was reached by a flight of stairs or a lift. The building was, unlike the Berghof, quite difficult to protect. When Hitler visited the property, 14 RSD bodyguards would secure the building and the outside street, in particular guarding the pavement outside to allow Hitler to safely exit or enter his limousine large groups of admirers often gathering to see him. The RSD, the Reichssicherheitsdienst, was a special unit of ex-German police officers in SS officers' uniforms that protected Hitler and other Nazi leaders. When Hitler was not in residence, seven RSD would be on duty at any one time. Additionally, if Hitler was there, a Munich police officer and one member of the SS Big Light Commando, another unit that protected the Führer, this time made up of officers and men of the Waffen-SS, were posted in front of the building. Because the property was joined to other buildings on both sides, the roof and attic was constantly guarded, with one RSD man stationed there 24 hours a day. All the chimneys had wire mesh coverings to prevent explosives being dropped into the building. The ground floor hosted a guard room, and all visitors were carefully checked. Once the war began, the building's cellar was extended and reinforced into an air raid shelter for Hitler's personal use. Hitler was usually in residence in November each year, particularly during the early years of the war, to give his famous speech to the old fighters of the early Nazi movement, and to take part in the famous parade through Munich, along the route Hitler had marched in the 1923 Beer Hall Putsch. The last occasion that Hitler actually used his Munich apartment was on the 8th to 9th of November 1943, when he had addressed the old faithful one last time at the Löwenbräu Keller, delivering a speech at 5pm on the 8th of November, the 20th anniversary of the failed Beer Hall Putsch. 
He then spent the night at his apartment before rising late on the 9th of November, breakfasting with Ava Brown and taking lunch at the Osteria Bavaria, one of his favourite restaurants in the city. He then spent the rest of the afternoon at his apartment with Ava, had a late dinner with his photographer Heinrich Hoffmann before boarding his special train at Munich station for the long journey to the wolf's lair in East Prussia. Though Hitler was not to use the Munich apartment, he was always kept ready for him to use at a moment's notice, and was full of his property and personal belongings, managed by his housekeeper, a Frau Annie Winter. Hitler was in Munich again on the 17th of April 1944, attending the funeral of Gauleiter Adolf Wagner at the Congress Hall of the Deutsches Museum. On this occasion, he was driven to Munich by car from Orbesalzberg, and he returned to the Berghof later that evening without visiting his apartment. One week later, he arrived in Munich to transfer to his private train for an onward journey to Berlin. The 24th of April 1944 was Hitler's last visit to the city of Munich. A year later, and Hitler was in his Berlin bunker beneath the Reich Chancellery, the Soviets having surrounded the city and fighting into the centre against fanatical, though eventually hopeless, resistance. Munich was also close to being captured by the advancing US Army. Munich would fall almost without a fight. On the 29th of April 1945, men from the US 42nd and 45th Infantry Divisions had liberated Dachau concentration camp north of the city, being deeply affected by the appalling sights that they encountered. Around 50 of the SS guards were shot out of hand by overwrought GIs, including the camp's temporary commander, SS Untersturmführer Heinrich Wicker. The next day, the forward elements of the U.S. 20th Armored Division crunched into the northwestern suburbs of Munich via Dachauer Strasse towards the bomb-damaged city center, while more U.S. units drove into Munich via Hirsching in the south. Most SS and Army units had evacuated the city on the 29th of April, so the Americans encountered little resistance. By afternoon, U.S. units had reached the heart of the old city, the Marienplatz, a large Nazi flag hanging from the clock tower of the Neues Rathaus, the city hall, was torn down. While this symbolic gesture was occurring, Hitler killed himself in his Berlin bunker. U.S. troops began the occupation of key Nazi buildings. Accommodation was also sought for headquarters and for senior officers and various units by occupying the big villas on the east side of the Isar River in the district of Borgenhausen. Hitler's luxurious apartment was captured by a small advance guard of troops of the 45th Infantry Division's 179th Infantry Regiment. The Americans knew the address and rushed to snatch it before a competing unit grabbed the prize. Frau Winter, the housekeeper, and the RSD guard detachment had scarpered three days earlier after securely locking the building. The interior was exactly as Hitler had last left it. The 179th Infantry's commanding officer, Lieutenant Colonel William P. Grace, established his command post in Hitler's apartment. The next afternoon, famous U.S. war correspondent Lee Miller and her photographer David E. Shernan were invited to visit and spend the night, a photograph of Miller washing in Hitler's bathtub becoming one of World War II's most iconic images. The U.S. troops occupying the building looted it very thoroughly. Many of Hitler's personal items, including bits and pieces of uniform, his civilian clothing, guns, cutlery, bed linen, and many other items, are on display at the 45th Infantry Division's Museum in Oklahoma City, while many other items have appeared in auctions throughout the U.S. After the building was handed back to German control, the Bavarian government ensured that it would not become a Nazi shrine, and indeed no access would be granted to the building and nobody allowed to live in it again. In fact, the chances of getting inside Hitler's old apartment today are fairly remote. The building is now the Munich Financing Office of the state of Bavaria, and Hitler's apartment the regional police headquarters. This is one place where a little light trespassing might have dire consequences for the historian, but it was nonetheless fascinating to see just how unchanged the building is from the outside. But I have the feeling the Bavarian government won't be putting up any blue plaques anytime soon. 
Many thanks for watching. Please subscribe and share, and also visit my audiobook channel, War Stories with Mark Felton. You can also help to support both of my channels at PayPal and Patreon. Details in the description box below. Thank you.